Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here on location at AWS reInvent, that's their annual conference. I'm John Furrier, your host. 11 years covering reInvent, seeing the movie many times, but this year, more than ever, it's more on point around generative AI. We've seen the change, all the hype is being matched up with major announcements. Um, just great energy, changing the game. It's going to go next level. It's totally legit, it's happening. We've got two great guests here. We've got Simon and Ryan here from Mission Cloud. Congratulations on being up on stage. Uh, and, Thank and, you. And, and getting recognized in your success. And great to see you guys again. Cube alumni, so welcome back 2014. <laughs> 2014, <laughs> represent. Um, two shows that don't around anymore. <laughs> um, but anyway, just, it's, all, it's all good. And what's interesting is, is that you know, last year I, I met with Adam and I kind of added this notion of, hey, this is next gen cloud coming. And mm -hmm. uh, no, there's ISVs, just, and we're the cloud. I'm like, okay, well, well, you're starting to see ecosystems form, you're starting to see platforms emerge. And they've been, it's been happening for a while. Last we saw the beginning of it, the rise of the snowflakes, the rise of the Databricks, MongoDBs. Companies sitting on top of their infrastructure, building in networks and platforms, and, and they have ecosystems, and they're solving bigger problems. It's not just software, it's a service, it's just changing. And, and obviously, uh, generative AI kicked in, it's even more obvious that the, the changing of the development environment with generative AI is happening. Um, and you guys are doing that right now, and your AI practice has been around for a while, so you're not, a stranger to AI, everyone's on the bandwagon now. We've been doing <laughs> AI for years. You guys actually have been doing AI for years. So yes, well, give us certainly the, Ryan has. Yeah. In terms of, First uh, of all, give us the update. What's the, what's the uh, on stage relevance? What's happening on stage? And let's get into the AI uh, practice. Well, Mission Cloud, we started it six years ago, and so we've been growing. We're premier partner now, and we started the practice three years ago when, when Ryan joined, and uh, of course, you know, he can talk about some of the projects we've been doing over the last few years, but the acceleration just in the last year of demand, and the, but the amazing thing that I find, you know, as the business leader of Mission, is there's just every single use case is totally understandable. You know, <laughs> document summarization, you know, AI assistant, they're just, yeah. they're, they're readily understandable use cases that we can go out there and yeah. pitch uh, to our com com customers and, yeah. So that's why there's such an acceleration. I mean, the heavy lifting, which is Amazon's kind of thing, we, uh, we uh, uh, automated way, the undifferentiated heavy, well that's kind of like for infrastructure, I get that, mm. but the AIs, there's a lot of heavy lifting stuff that no one wants to do, that you right. can do with AI, and right. do it better. Right, absolutely. With a human in the loop or not. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, for us, you know, we've been doing NLP for a long time, right? And so it was pretty, it was kind of one of those things when Gen AI, right? Gen AI is interesting because ChatGPT is a toy, right? What did ChatGPT yeah. do? They made a web interface on top of a model, while before you had to go and do a bunch of work to get that model ready, right? And, but now it's, you know, people see, they have their imaginations awoken, so you're asking about the stage, we're working with a company, Magellan TV, they create documentaries and things you don't think about, they want to do content localization, right? Right now they're US based, mm -hmm. they want to you know, push it out across the world, and so how do, how do you do that, right? You've got to look at, okay, I've got to take and make a transcript of everything, then I have to translate it. Now, in the US, we suck at English, right? We're just terrible. Like, we have idioms and slang yeah, yeah. and everything like jargon. Just, <laughs> jargon, like just a mess, right? You were talking yeah. about it earlier, yeah. just you know, all kinds of jargon. And so you have yeah. to sit there and go, okay, I got to first do an English to English translation. So that's one of the spots we used the Titan model is to figure out, take all the slang and all the idioms yeah. out, create clean English, and you take that and you translate it. And then when you translate it, because it's documentaries, you have windows, right? You yeah. have time windows where you're like, okay, I got to fit in a time window, so we do summarization, yeah. right? Because after you translate, if it becomes too long, it's like, okay, I got to summarize that. Like, we have pretty heavy prompts <laughs> that are like, you need to blah, blah, blah within, you know, 10 seconds. And, we, <laughs> you know, every language we look at, there's something new, right? Yeah. Like, we're doing a bunch of German right now, and everything has an article in front of it, right? In the English, we yeah. don't use articles. I mean, that translation is hard. Translation yeah. is extremely difficult. How do you guys, what's the quality on that? How do you get that checked? Because do you, I mean, it's not always the same, even in English, is, first of all, put the English aside with the translation and jargon, but the translation to that in foreign language is very difficult. It is, but you know, there's a lot of programs out there. Translate from Amazon does a pretty good job. And we also, there's a translator that works for Magellan that you know, we're yeah. doing hand, you know, they're doing hand checks of everything for the first, you know, the first like hundred right, so let, videos. Let's, let's dig into that example. So, so let's take that company, so they, they do films, whatever. 
What's without mission? What was? What's the process? And with mission, what's the? Give me the, the, well, the, the before and after. The, the business problem that they have is because it's documentary film. It's long tail content, so they can't afford, <coughs> excuse me, to go out and spend you know four or five thousand dollars per documentary to localize. But they also can't actually go out and test new markets. Yeah. And they would have to spend a lot of money to so there's go a front cost to even know what the so market they, is. So they, they literally just wouldn't do it they would just gradually because incrementally. Because too much money up front to figure out money is there front. a market for it. Exactly, but now, you know, with the system that we've built, they can very cost effectively, order of magnitude, say look, yeah. yes, we want to sign with this new distributor, we want to go into Germany, France, you know, other countries around the world, and so that's, the, the, the business model just makes a lot more so sense. So on the, te them. the tech problem, is it, is it saving time, is it, or is it? It's both, right? Yeah. So, it would be about $20 a minute traditional way, and it's like less than a dollar a minute through the pipeline that we built out for them. And you've got it almost instantaneous versus people doing it essentially yeah, yeah. by hand. So basically they can get into a market economically, test it, see about it. So you guys took that burden away, the hurdle yeah. was high. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right, so what's the core business right now that you guys have going on here? How did it all get to come together? And what's the relationship with AWS? Why the onstage partner recognition? Well, we really built um, an overlay business that combines resale, financial operations, managed services, and a whole range of consulting, but all focused on AWS, and that's kind of unique in, mm -hmm. the, in the market. A lot of companies are focused on multiple cloud ecosystems and so on, and so what that means is we've got this con continuous engagement model across all of our customers, so wherever they are in their life cycle, they might come to us for a migration, you know, and then it's cloud operations, they might come to us for a data and analytics yeah, project. Yeah. So, uh, as a company, we've grown now to 500 customers and about uh, 350 team, and uh, it's, you know, we're at that scale now where I think AWS is absolutely realizing that, you know, when we get involved, yeah the customer's more secure, they're happier, their projects go faster, and ultimately we actually grow AWS's revenue about 2x what you know, customers would grow without yeah. mission being involved. Yeah, you guys are a great partner for Amazon, but there's now the AI piece, obviously that's hot. We kind of touched upon it in Remars, because yeah. uh, that was kind of a cool kind of AI kind of vibe show. Um, Talk about the AI because, you know, again, the joke on theCUBE is, me and Dave always say, oh, I've been doing, we've been doing AI for, for years. And that's, everyone kind of has, but mm -hmm. there's the haves and have not really been doing it. Like, so like, what is AI? I mean, I can say we've been doing AI, but not really. It's not really <laughs> pure NLP. We got some NND extraction, we do some things. I mean, that's all, I mean, that's all playing around, but it's not serious AI. So you guys have been doing some serious AI for a while. Take us through how that started and what, how it's evolved and what you're looking at today because I'm sure, you got a huge, looking at the Gen AI as a huge opportunity. Gen AI is absolutely massive. Yeah, I mean, I started basically, you know, grad school, maybe undergrad, <laughs> to, doing AI stuff, a lot of computer vision. I worked for a think tank for yeah. a long time, built AR devices, and then was sitting on my couch after the AR company I worked for imploded, and started at a different partner, built yeah. that practice, so built all the relationships with AWS. We got bought by a company I won't name that <laughs> destroys every company they buy. <laughs> so, I have a few I can think of, I won't be going, let's not go there. <laughs> so don't, then, no, pro tip, don't sell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then I joined Mission to build the practice, right? Start from the ground up. You know, we already had a lot of relationships with yeah. AWS and yeah. you know, I'm known through the AWS community so we were able to build another team at Mission for AI, you know, doing the computer vision, the predictive stuff and a, a lot of NLP work early on and then with Gen AI, like, we were there already, right? We had all yeah. the use cases, we were doing summarization, we were using the models, and so we yeah. became more or less for you know, small, medium business and startups as, hey, this is the partner that's done it, yeah. they know what they're doing, come in and, and work with them. And it's been crazy, you know, we, the AWS just had kind of a cool funding program where we had, we've lined up for the next six months like 35 Gen AI projects, like it's going to be a yeah. crazy and, and they need And they need the help, you were hitting the early adopters early, Yep. Okay, and then as the hype kicked in, that grew, and then when the super hype kicked with the ChatGPT, it's funny, ChatGPT, you mentioned the, uh, the interface, um, before they launched, it was called a chatbot. I mean, basically, I mean, right. that's what, they don't say that anymore. <laughs> it's now a revolution. But I think it, is, was, it was a browser moment. I mean, to me, I think that was, what was great about that moment was it educated the masses 
that this new thing, that means the way it streams the, the results was cool. I mean, that's like. I mean, it reminded it was, me so much of when Google, Google launched. Yeah, like, Candidly, wow. it was, you know, same sort of thing. It was like, oh, a so very simple prompt. Yeah, and so and people, yeah. like, I, I knew like, they don't even know like, what, how I speak like tech Russian, I guess. Like, you know, the people are like, what, you, what is Kubernetes? And they use all the mm. jargon. They're like, they're getting it. So that must have a huge impact to your business. What's been that result for you guys? I'm sure that there's been a tsunami of business flowing to your doorstep now that the whole world is rushing to try to figure out how to you know, engage with the models, what's the architecture look like, data pipelining. There's a lot of like engineering that needs to go on to set up the developer market that's booming, that's going to come on board. We predict that, and our research team's got some data that the developer market will, will, will surge in popularity as the bedrocks get better. You're going to have developers feeding on that like a frenzy. And it will, you know, it's, I think it's still very early days, so we're seeing just a lot of experimentation, and so what's interesting is we haven't yet seen like the underlying infrastructure growth really kick in, uh, you know, full, full tilt yet, but um, so much experimentation, that's going to continue for a while. But when, I, when uh, Adam Slipsky announced yeah. like Amazon Q and Q yeah. being embedded in Code Whisperer yesterday, yeah. Yeah. you can just see the hyper efficiencies that you know, this yeah. new AI assistant as well. I mean, we're, we're probably going to embed it into some of our software and so on, but yeah. it's, um, so I, I think we're, our strategy overall is just lean in. We're, yeah. we're hiring a lot yeah. of people as well. AWS is actually helping us hire <laughs> yeah. through a strategic collaboration agreement that we signed earlier this year. So a, a lot of it's about just go, go, go. And so your relationship pretty deep with Amazon. Yes. You're all in on Amazon. We're all in on oh, Amazon. No other cloud, just AWS. No other cloud, correct. Yes. All in, okay, oh, so they must love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were one of the first partners to get access to Bedrock back in June, so we've been using it yeah. for a long time, right? And, you know, it, it's crazy, you know, like Simon said, you know, we're, we have eight use cases that we've built out for customers over the last, you know, year, and even more now as the foundation models become easier to use, and it's, it's crazy we've built, you know, our own architecture pattern yeah. that we call Ragnarok, you know, we, <laughs> we love some good Marvel, you know, but <laughs> yeah. instead of just ending in the, in the C, we added the yeah. extra K, but, you know, obviously it's Rag, and then the NA is for agents, and then yeah, on bedrock. So. Yeah, a little clever hack there, beautiful. I saw the party rock that they launched, too. that was kind of clever. Um, wh wh what's, uh, what's the uh, end game now for you guys on this next leg of the journey? I'm saying, not end game, next step. Better, better way to put it. Um, as you're now set up, yeah, it's, it's like you said, you got to get lean in, get inside the tornado, as, the, as that book would say. You don't want to be, you don't want to get too, you don't want to be thrown mm. around, get inside the action. You're already there. What's the next step for mission? Well, this is maybe a little contrarian, but we're not going to change our domain name to missioncloud.ai. Because <laughs> someone else because, got it. <laughs> no, because like, we've, you know, we built the company from the start. We really want to be yeah. like the largest independent cloud services platform company in the world, you know, with AWS, and we're already well on our way in the US, and I think, look, AI is this new mega trend. It's going to drive so many use case is going to drive a lot of our business, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's still so much else yeah. that we're doing for customers, like, you know, the cloud operations, the, um, you know, a lot you of the typical are, stuff. We don't, we, don't want to, we don't want to push that aside and just be But like, your business is, is not just services, you're a managed service cloud. Correct. Front so you're front-ending AWS. Yes, we're and, simplifying and the experience for SMBs with mission control. Building use case template kind of model where people can just have solutions on top of. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so you're at the top of the stack for Amazon, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah, and I think the big thing for us on AI is like, we're not doing the simple stuff, right? Like AW, like Swami just announced, right? Okay, you can now we integrate it to make RAG easier. Okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're yeah. doing stuff with like. Give companies. an example of some hard stuff. Yeah, we're, we're working with a company that's like that that does printed books, photo books, right? And so right now you come in, it's a pain, right? It's it's yeah. terrible. Pick a template, yeah. all that, right? And so they've seen with their business, hey. A lot of people stop because they're just tired, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, what am I doing here? A lot of people mix and match templates, and so they're like, how do we make this total gen AI, yeah, right? Yeah. How do I come in, no longer have to build templates, no longer have to have you know, all the embellishments, stickers, and all that. How can I give the customer, hey, build some pages, and then have an auto-complete button, right? So we're working on, okay, yeah. you uploaded some pictures, let me caption the pictures, then take the captions and build a story out of it, and then create you know, the full yeah. book out of that. So you know, that, yeah. you know, that's well past any, <laughs> any chat bots. Yeah, and then you else. get the computer vision backgrounds we talked about in the, on our last CUBE interview. You bring up a good point, this comes back down to um, inertia and people have stuck in the old ways, and, and there's a theme that I'm seeing where 
there's some companies that are just so established with these with data warehouses that they literally are stuck. They don't even know, they're like paralyzed um, from, a, from an agility standpoint. They can't even move. Do you guys see some of that? And, and for the folks that recognize that, hey, I got I to gotta either blow this up or put a wrapper around it or do something, how do they get from that antiquated paralysis to movement forward? Yeah, so I've talked to, about this a lot. So it's kind of <laughs> interesting, right? Like you have Gen AI and then you have Gen BI, right? With QuickSight and everything yeah. trying to push Gen BI. So I've told people like next year is going to be the year where everyone's like, my schema really sucks and everyone's going to be redoing all their database schemas <laughs> to make it so that these Gen BI tools can work, right? So they can gather yeah. you know, that information. You know, AWS is using data zone and things like that to kind of yeah. help with that, but that's going to be a lot of So you're, you're, you're clear, you see this as like, there's going to be a reset of schemas and databases. Yep. Also, the other thing about the, the keynote that I want to bring up is that, well, I don't got to end quickly, but the, you mentioned that the, the, the demo on the queue the whole thousand Java apps in two days, mm -hmm. and then them dropping the little hint of .NET to Linux. Mm -hmm. I mean, to your point about things changing, I mean, that's, that's, that blew me away. I literally fell out of my chair. I'm like, that's huge value. I mean, can you imagine the impact on cost, license cost on .NET alone, exactly. alone. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be like, push a button, sign me up if I'm a big company. Absolutely. I mean, that's the radical nature of what's coming out of this. Yeah, and a lot of the systems do that coding difference. Like, we we have a couple of projects that are there where they often have just templates, right? Where they need to, to redo SQL or other templates and they want their customers to just be able to write a quick sentence, right? And have, hey, here, here it all is. So it's-, it's Well, Ryan, let's get, it, let's get together again soon. Simon, let's do, let's do a deep dive on all this stuff on business and the tech. I know we got to go. Last minute we have left. Put a plug in for what you guys are working on. You're on stage, got an award, saw that. What are you guys doing? What's next? You're hiring. What's on your goals? Give a, give a plug for Mission Cloud. Uh, big thing is we launched Mission, Con Mission Control in the AWS marketplace, so it's a really easy on-ramp for customers, you know, particularly in the SMB realm, to be able to you know, bring all of our services together. And so it's our first ISV play, the fourth leg of the stool. So that's, that's the plug I'll make. What do yeah. you say, Ryan? Uh, my plug is we're the, one of the only all-stop, or uh, one of the only one-stop shops out there, right? You can come to Mission, do you resell, do you yeah. 24 seven MSP and professional services. There's no one else out there that can do everything yeah. for a company. Can, Ryan, congratulations on all the hard work you guys put into. Great to see you guys again. 2014 OpenStack, world's changed. I you know, know. I mean, <laughs> hey. It, it turns over, it turns over. <laughs> it's good for Great fun. stuff, and thanks for the swag, appreciate it. We'll be back with more CUBE coverage, back to the studio for On Location here. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>